Hey, Headliner Nation, what is going on? Welcome back to the Draft.com studios for another episode of the Fantasy Headliners. And I apologize there. I didn't mean for you to catch me sleeping, but it was because we are jumping into a very specific episode here, talking about wide receiver sleepers for the 2019 season. And we're going to get jumping into that information right away. But first, make sure that you go out and you order the 2019 Fantasy Headliners Draft Guide. You can get that right now at thefantasyheadliners.com. Almost 500 pages packed full of fantasy football knowledge to help you win your leagues this season. And as always, during this video, hit that like button if you love the content. Make sure you leave a comment below with any questions or feedback that you have. And more importantly, if you're new to Headliner Nation, hit that subscribe button and let us know so I can personally welcome you. We're talking about wide receiver sleepers, and these are going to be deep sleepers. These are three rookies that I have for the 2019 season that could end up making an impact or a big enough impact that you should take a look at rostering them. So let's jump into it and let's talk about what rookie wide receivers you should be looking at in your leagues. All right, the first name that you see there off to the right-hand side, Darius Slayton for the New York Giants. I'm going to tell you why I think that out of the three names that I'm listing here, this is the guy that has the most upside, the most impact, uh, or most potential impact for this season. So why is Darius Slayton a guy that you should be paying attention to in fantasy football this year? He is a fifth-round pick out of Auburn for the New York Giants, and the dude can fly, which is exactly what the Giants need right now. He ran a 4.3940, uh, which is in the 95th percentile. And also, it got this stat, as I was doing some research for Darius Slayton, I got this stat off playerprofiler.com, and it's called Catch Radius. And what that means is it's a player's ability to cover ground laterally as well as go airborne to catch and secure the football. And they say that on playerprofiler.com, anything over 10.2 is considered extraordinary for a wide receiver. Well, Darius Slayton's catch radius is 10.33, which is in the 90. Fifth percentile. Now, he wasn't a volume receiver in college, so he's not going to have a ton of those volume stats that you would expect um, for a maybe a top wide receiver pick, but that's why he went in the fifth round. However, he averaged 20.3 yards per reception over his three years at Auburn. And I already talked about it. I already talked about the dude can fly a 4.39 in the 40. He's already started taking some snaps with the first team offense as well. That happened towards the end of OTAs. And honestly, outside of Sterling Shepard, Shepard, Evan Ingram, and Golden Tate, there isn't a bunch of weapons there for the for the New York Giants. And the one thing that they're solely lacking, the biggest thing that Odell Beckham Jr. could do that the people on the team can't right now is stretch the field. Darius Slayton's sole job is to stretch the field, which they need to do because if Saquon Barkley is going to be their key to winning football games and the offense is going to run through Saquon Barkley, you have to be able to pull that defense out of the box as much as possible. Yeah, you can stretch the field with Evan Ingram. You can stretch the field with Sterling Shepard, but neither of them are the type of guys that are like Darius Slayton, who is like a poor man's Deshaun Jackson. Not saying that that's what he's going to be in his career, but there's a lot of people that are already saying Darius Slayton could turn out to be one of the steals of the 2019 NFL rookie draft. He has a chance to make even a little bit of an impact this season. He could be a guy that when the Giants are playing maybe a pass, a bad pass defense, maybe if Shepard is ever banged up or Tate is banged up, maybe Tate just doesn't adjust well to the new offense, or maybe Ingram just isn't nearly as good as we had hoped he would be this year, which... I hope not because I think he's going to be really good. But whatever it may be, Darius Slayton is the guy that could see some big plays. He could see some big touchdowns. And he's a guy that if you play him on the correct week, he could give you more than enough points to help you to a fantasy football victory. All right, moving forward, my man Hunter Renfro from the Oakland Raiders. This is a guy coming out of the draft that I thought was going to be a really nice sleeper for some team. And let me tell you, Hunter Renfro, he might not jump off the page to you, but let's explain a little bit more why he is a guy that we're keeping an eye on here heading into 2019. He's a fifth-round pick out of Clemson, and let me be frank, right off the bat, let me just say this. Athletically and statistically, there's nothing that really stands out about Hunter Renfro. I mean, he's not a guy that you're clamoring to go get off the waiver wire. He was a fifth-round pick. But over his four years at Clemson, 186 receptions, 2,133 yards, and 15 touchdowns. Again, statistically, 
nothing there that jumps off the page that says, oh man, need to own Hunter Renfro. But let me tell you, it's the intangibles. It's other things that stand out to me when it comes to Hunter Renfro. Number one, the kid shows up in big spots. Back in the 2017 National Championship against Alabama, one that the, uh, Clemson, uh, one that the Clemson Tigers won, 10 receptions for 92 yards and two touchdowns, including that game-winning touchdown. He showed up in a huge spot, showed up in the big spot in that game, and he was a guy that Alabama was 100% worried about over their next two matchups. They really shut him down after that, but he showed out in this one and showed, uh, showed that he could perform in those spots. He's driven, too, the drive in this kid. He's a former walk-on, a former walk-on that turns into a two-time national championship, and his leadership ability, he was a four-year starter at Clemson. The kid was on the field. Even though he started as a walk-on, his drive and his leadership got him onto the field more times than not. But let me tell you something about the Oakland Raiders and why he fits so well for them. The Oakland Raiders, since 2016, have 105 drops from their pass catchers. That's insane. That is in the top 10 every single year since 2016. Hunter Renfro can help to re, uh, to alleviate that in some ways. Over his final two seasons at Clemson, he was targeted 143 times with only two drops. He also caught 66.7% of contested targets the last two seasons, which ranked fourth in the FBS. And that's according to Pro Football Focus. So the kid can go get it. The Raiders have 23.3 vacated targets per game from 2018 heading into this season. 101 of those vacated targets are coming specifically from Jared Cook. Now, Hunter Renfro, I mean, they have Darren Waller. They, they have Darren Waller there now. I think he is a good tight end, a serviceable tight end, and he's a sleeper that I like for this season. But Hunter Renfro is going to be the guy that's going to see a lot of those intermediate targets. Obviously, you have Antonio Brown there. He's going to be able to do some good things. Jalen Richard, I know he gets overlooked quite a bit, but there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity for Hunter Renfro to get some of those intermediate targets and really rack up some PPR points. Now, is he going to be an 8, 9, 10 catch type of person every single game? No, but I mean, the guy realistically could have anywhere between four to six catches a game. He's not going to, I mean, he's not a burner. He averaged just barely 10 yards per reception while in college. You're probably going to see the same thing. He might score a few touchdowns here or there. But he's a guy that, even though you probably won't be drafting to begin the season, if you're dealing with injuries or you're dealing with bye weeks, whatever it may be, if you're in a PPR league, Hunter Renfro at some point this season is going to be a guy that you take a look at and probably add off the waiver wire to at least get you through, again, a week or two. All right, my last sleeper to talk about on this episode, Anthony Johnson, the undrafted free agent out of Buffalo, now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And let's talk about why Anthony Johnson uh, should have your eye this season as well. Uh, he is, again, an undrafted free agent from Buffalo, but it is two seasons and he transferred. So that's why he only played two seasons at Buffalo. He was a Juco transfer. But in his two seasons at Buffalo, 133 receptions, 2,367 yards, and 25 touchdowns. Back-to-back -back seasons with double-digit touchdowns. Now his production was slightly down in 2018. But he had a lingering hamstring issue last year, and he still had over 1,000 receiving yards and still led the MAC in reception touchdowns. There is 179 vacated targets after the departure of Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson in Tampa Bay. So there is an opportunity for him to win the wide receiver three role and potentially see some value. Keep in mind, Bruce Arians has already hinted at Chris Godwin playing the Larry Fitzgerald role out of the slot. So more than likely, Godwin is not going to be someone that's going to be on the outside a whole lot. We're probably going to see him in the slot more times than not. And Anthony Johnson didn't test well at the combine. He didn't. And that's one of the reasons he went undrafted. But the kid can play ball. Last year, and if you look at it, if you look at a team and say, you know what? How can a wide receiver three have a whole lot of fantasy value? Well, last year, Chris Godwin and Deshaun Jackson basically shuffled back and forth between that wide receiver three spot in Tampa with Mike Evans being one and Adam Humphreys being two. But Godwin and Jackson were both fantasy servable, serviceable at times. Godwin had 59 receptions for 100, 842 yards and seven touchdowns, put him at the wide receiver 25 in standard, wide receiver 27 in PPR. Jackson had 41 receptions, 774 yards, four touchdowns. That put him at wide 
wide receiver 32 in standard, wide receiver 42 in PPR. And the reason that I say that Anthony Johnson is the wide receiver as the wide receiver three could still have some sort of fantasy value for you. OJ Howard has dealt with some issues injury wise the last couple of seasons. And there's nobody in the backfield as of right now that's really going to be competing for a whole lot of targets. So your main pass catcher is there, obviously OJ, OJ Howard, but if he gets hurt, then you're looking at basically the wide receivers. You've got Mike Evans, you've got Chris Godwin, and then you've got whoever wins the wide receiver three role, and Anthony Johnson could be that guy. Right now, basically his biggest competitor is going to be Justin Watson. But Anthony Johnson is the type of big-bodied receiver, the type of guy that Jameis Winston is going to like to throw to in the end zone. With him on the outside along with Mike Evans, a couple of big guys that can stand over the top of safeties, they're going to have to get a little bit of help. And if they're going to be calling for that help, then that's Chris Godwin that can beat you know, one of those nickel, uh, nickel corners that comes in. Safety is going to have to drop down. They're going to have to do a lot of different things if they have those big wide receivers on the field at all times. And trust me, Bruce Arians is not going to be a afraid to why uh, to run uh, three wide receivers a lot and then obviously OJ Howard playing him at tight end or moving him out as well so a lot of opportunities a lot of potential there for Anthony Johnson is the wide receiver three in Tampa Bay all right so those are three names that I have for you some deep sleepers guys that you are going to have to keep your eye on uh, this season put them on your watch list they're going to get buried you're not going to draft any of these three guys come draft day unless you're in a really deep league uh, dynasty league keeper league something like that or if there's some sort of significant injury between now and the start of the season but put them all on your watch list keep an eye on them each one of them are guys that I'm targeting in terms of potential waiver additions might spend a little bit of fab on them might spend a waiver claim on them whatever it may be they could help you get through some tough times this year injuries bye weeks whatever it may be these guys could end up helping you out Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, also comment below. Make sure you go get that draft guide if you haven't done so yet. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Fantasy Headliners. I'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.